The next one is, I'll read it out for you. It's a, it's a long one by Lena. Uh, she asked us if we know that the customer wants to or expects to do a specific thing in a process that is not possible, should the not possible step be added in the activity slash situation cards or should it be part of the emotions below? Mm. Now, mm. long question. And first, maybe Daniel, you need to explain what are activity cards, emotion cards, uh, why is she asking this question? Yeah, the activity cards is what the, the, the actual customer journey. So what activities and situations do the customers go through? Uh, because a customer journey is not a lineup of touch points. That's, that's a wrong way to work with customer journeys. I've been there. I think most people that work with customer journeys have mapped touch points. I have soon come to the conclusion that it's super stupid. You have to start <laughs> with customer activities and yeah. active, uh, customer situations. Uh, so the question here is, so if the, if the customer wants to do something and it's not possible, should there be in the customer's activity? And I would say, yes, for sure. Of course it has to be, because what we are doing here is that we are we are actually mapping the customers the customer journey we are not mapping our own touch points or how we as an organization are serving the customer so we can't we can't be blind for those things that the customers want to do uh, either the customer will choose someone else that will do it or we will in the future have to serve them yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, I, I mean, a good example, IKEA, for instance, is, yeah, the Swedish furniture store. I mean, they. We also have them in the Netherlands. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, and I think more of the or, or, or that organization today is are in Netherlands. I, uh, I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they they sell furniture that you have to put together yourself, as you know. So in. And people maybe don't want to do that. So in several countries, there's there's a bunch of other uh, uh, organizations or, or entrepreneurs around IKEA that offer their service to bring your furniture home and to, to put them together. And so that is a part in what the customers want. They maybe don't want to put the IKEA furniture to, to, to mount them. Um, to screw them together and they don't want, don't want to bring them home so what should IKEA do then in their customer journey should they just skip this no they don't they have to solve it somehow uh, and then it's a it's a it's a matter of how do they want to solve it is the part of their core business to offer this or not and when it comes to, ki to kitchen it is uh, but when it comes to a chair it's maybe not so it makes complete sense, right? Yeah. If, yeah if, if you would, if you would ignore it, then you're basically ignoring opportunities to help your customers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, hmm. iPhone, iPhone, for instance, or Apple. I mean, in every corner, in every city today, there's a, there's a place where you could change the, the display. That's hmm. a really important part in the customer's journey when you're using a smartphone. So should uh, Samsung or or Apple uh, skip that in the customer journey? No, they shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Should they the, solve why, it? Probably why, not. Why do you think this question comes up? Because people are mixing up touch points with customer activities. People think that a customer journey is something that the organization does for the customer. And rather than it's something a person, a real life person, actually is going through. Yes. And I think it's really good. I think it's it's very good that we get those questions and that we we can answer them because a lot of the mistakes people does when it comes to customer journeys are connected to this question. Mm. Most mm. mistakes. Mm. 